Hey, welcome to another episode of 28 Days of Blackness. Today we have with us our community's very own OK Now, Tony Perkins. He'll be talking about Stokely Carmichael and we're not going to hold him up. Tony, can you give us a little bit about Stokely's earlier life? Well, he was actually born in Trinidad. He came over with his parents when he was two years old. They brought him to the States and they, they were living in Harlem, New York. And he was actually a prominent socialist organizer for the Civil Rights Movement. But he was born on January 29th, 1941. His parents were Mabel Carmichael. His dad was Adolphus Carmichael. And he started early. Early in his life, he had went to uh, Bronx Science High School, where he was uh, top of his. He was the top of his class. And actually, what, what amazed me about Stokely Carmichael was, at a young age, he was very active in his community. Actually, he had, he had uh, joined the protest while, while in high school of a local white castle where, where they refused to hire blacks. And during that time, he, was, he, he, he became very, 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 very heavy in... Um, his uh, organization, which he uh, began to uh, join when he attended college, when he graduated from uh, Howard University as a uh, psychology major. And it was just, Stokely Carmichael was just amazing because he stood for everything. He stood for everything. He, he actually joined the uh, organization, the NS, the Student Nonviolent Commitment Committee. He was actually the chairman of that of that organization, and they had several protests going on throughout throughout the uh, state of New York and all kinds of organizations that, that that just rallied together around Stokely Carmichael. That is amazing, and especially to see someone transition from youth to activism. You know, a lot of us, you know, take a, you know, a, a long time, but I guess it was a sign of the times. This is during the civil rights um, era, correct? Yes. And um, what I like about Stokely is um, that, you know, he was a very, very passionate person in everything that he's done. You can see so in his speeches. When did he begin to gain a little bit more notoriety for some of the things that he's famous for now? I think he, he started to gain a lot more notoriety when, when, he, became, when he came up with the uh, Black Power Movement. He was known for the Black Power Movement, and that was just a movement really to just get uh, African Americans more conscious of just being being independent with their uh, socioeconomics and just being independent with how, how we were living. We couldn't join other organizations until we had our thing together, and he was big on that, and that was most important, but he also, you know, during his time, this is, you know, all of these things transpired in the 60s. So the 60s played a significant role back with Stokely Carmichael because he had uh, traveled a couple of, couple of states from Jackson, Mississippi to Selma, Alabama, and he actually uh, joined in the Freedom March with Dr. King, where he played a significant role in that. Also, he also, um, in 1963, 60, 64, I want to say, he was in Lotus County, where... He increased the registered voters by 300, and that was actually 300 more than white registered voters. So that was huge back then because it was tough for us to vote. Oh, wow. So he tackled some real, you talk about voters registration and we talk about the Freedom March and he um, marched with King. Um, that's that's pretty big, especially now. How old is he around this time when he's marching with King? Actually, I want to say Stokely Carmichael at that age, at that time, he's he had to be 18, 18, 19 years old. Wow, and that's huge. That's huge. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely, and it speaks a lot to him. You know, and you you mentioned earlier that he was a very bright man. Yes. Um. So when we talk about Stokely. Um, and we talk about being in the presence of greatness. You mentioned um, Dr. King. Did he follow some of the same philosophies as King as far as nonviolence? Yes, he did. He started out with that. His, his, his thing was nonviolence in the beginning. But him and, him and King didn't see eye to eye at one point because King was on uh, turning the other cheek and Stokely wasn't really for that for a minute. But then he came around and, you know, he had asked a, a favor of King. 
in a, in a situation where he wanted King to uh, address an issue. And King, his, it was funny because his response was, I've taken orders before for a good cause. Why not one more? And that played a significant part in the, um, the uh, Black Power movement. And it was huge. Stokely Carmichael was amazing. And during, during his time, on, on all his protests, he did get arrested several times. And the crazy thing about it, he was very a very charismatic guy. And they said in, while he was in prison, not prison, he was in jail, his, he boosted the morale of all the inmates, just keeping everybody positive due to the situation and knowing that his situation was definitely serious. Mm, mm. And we're all getting this from a very, very young man. And, and I, I love that. And I love the beauty behind that. But unfortunately, often when there's a lot of um, you know resistance to an oppressive system, there's always some kind of pullback. And they come with dire consequences um, often. You had mentioned jail. Were there any other consequences for his um, beliefs and his power movement? Right. He, he also teamed up with a couple of guys uh, as far as the Freedom Riders. Freedom Riders. And um, that was a, a, a boycott and... Um, against uh, public transportation, the bus, bus transportation and the bus station, actually. And um, that happened, that took place in, uh, I think, the Baltimore, from, in Baltimore, from Baltimore to Washington, D.C. That's where all of that took place. And um, he was actually, because after that, after that protest, him and his guys chose to take the train to New Orleans. And during that, there were uh, white protesters outside not letting them get on the train. And they were, you know, they were spitting on them, throwing lit cigarettes on them, just being totally disrespectful. And once they were uh, allowed to ride the train, they got off the train and entered the cafeteria where they all were arrested for um, disturbing the peace. And that's where um, him and uh, a couple of the guys were arrested and uh, it's just it was just it was just amazing how he just kept the morale of guys being in prison and still dealing with the situation. But he was he, he just was for his cause. And that's what I really admired about Stokely Carmichael. Oh, that's 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 definitely deep. And we appreciate you telling the tell. You know, when we hear about Stokely um, Carmichael, um, ultimately, what came uh, what became of uh, Stokely Carmichael? Well, Stokely Carmichael, he became a significant part. He actually teamed up with the Black Panthers, working alongside Bobby Seale and uh, a couple of other guys, and it was it was just a strong movement back in back then. But after that, he transitioned to Africa, where at some point he had gotten sick. He had uh, was diagnosed with prostate cancer, and. Um, but Sophie Carmichael said it was uh, the FBI who were following him, J. Edgar Hoover, who actually, he said he kind of poisoned him and gave him this disease, but as far as trying to assassinate him. So he had transitioned to Africa where he met his wife, and later on he had uh, dealt with that for two years, and he actually uh, unfortunately passed away in 1998. So he succumbed to his... Um, illness um, not too long ago, 1998, which yes. is a lot longer than a lot of people, um, leaders of the Black Panther um, Party movement. When we talk about Huey P. Newton and some of the other um, guys, that is amazing. That is amazing. Yes. So hearing about this rich, strong legacy, um, how does it help you to do what you do for our community? It's, it's very helpful for me because... He taught me so much just doing research on this guy. If you set out to do something and it's in your heart to do it, stick by it. Don't let nobody deter you from what you, what you uh, plan to achieve. Just stay consistent, be strong, be positive, remain focused on the task at hand, and just be great. And, and don't let nobody distract you from what you're doing and just be adamant about what you're trying to do and accomplish out here in these streets. That is amazing. That is amazing. But you know, we can't let you go that easy, yeah, brother. It's okay. It's okay. So we're going to ask you to give us a quote, a saying, some 
positive energy to push us into the next episode. You know, um, you know, anything that you can provide us, you know, a saying or something like that, please close us out. But for the most part, I just like to always remain positive and just know that anything you set your mind to, you can do it. And at the end of the day, everything is okay now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for tuning in. This has been another episode of 28 Days of Blackness. We want to thank once more our good friend Tony Perkins.